Hello, um, welcome to the eighth session uh, on gender based violence. So, we are looking at uh, GBV from uh, a gender perspective. Uh, so, we look at um, uh, GBV as a uh, development issue. Uh, uh, the forms and uh, the, the, some of the factors influencing uh, GBV and of course the implications uh, of GBV to development at different levels and then uh, we'll look at uh, the strategies adopted by both government and um, uh, civil society organization and uh, just to be clear, this is uh, these are Uganda-based strategies. Um, so we we'll look at them and uh, how civil society organizations and government have been able to to respond. And then we we'll look at some of the missing links. Um, So again, uh, just a reminder: we all know gender-based gender violence. I mean, um, gender looks at uh, differences in power relations, uh, which sometimes leads to opportunities um, uh, that are differently experienced by men and women, or boys and girls, in their lifetime. And of course, uh, such distinctions also lead to some gender inequalities and other challenges. And of course, one of the con uh, the, the concomitant um, effects of, of such uh, gender differences is uh, the gender-based violence. So the distinctions of gender lead to social, cultural, political, and economic gender inequalities, and these inequalities uh, in, in indeed uh, perpetuate gender-based violence. Um, and also, we do not need to confuse gender with women, uh, which is uh, most common uh, confusion among many. Uh, when we talk about G GBV, uh, uh, we are not necessarily talking about uh, violence against women, but violence when uh, violence against women is uh, can be treated as a subset of uh, GBV, uh, and therefore GBV is broader than <coughs> excuse me than um, uh, violence against women. So, in other words, uh, the reason why we treat it as a broader perspective it's uh, because GBV. Um, <coughs> can affect uh, or can be experienced by um, both males and, and females, uh, boys and girls, uh, mean women and, and, and men. Uh, but of course, uh, we also don't want to forget that uh, um, we also don't want to forget that uh, uh, GBV affects uh, children and women disproportionately, of course, compared to uh, boys and, and, and men. So, uh, the, U, U, the UN 1995 defines gender-based violence as any act of violence that results in, uh, or is likely to result in, physical, sexual, mental harm, or suffering to men or women, uh, of course, including threats of acts uh, that have to do with coercion or arbitrary deprivation of liberty and freedoms, uh, and it doesn't matter whether it occurs in public or private life of, of any individual. Um, so some of the key important aspects to note is that uh, uh, GBV has to do with violence or aggression. It could be intentional or unintentional, verbal or non-verbal. Uh, it occurs in private or public uh, uh, spheres. Um, it could be conscious or unconscious harm uh, as a result of intentional or uh, uh, non-intentional. Uh, and of course, uh, 
and therefore there is a likelihood that the 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 victim or uh, current now we we look at them as survivor the victim or survivor is uh, is likely to suffer uh, from violent acts and of course the perpetrator uh, or survivor who could be we have a perpetrator or survivor who could be a female or a male so all those are key aspects that you you may not so the fact is that gbv uh, can happen to or can affect anyone so it doesn't matter um, whether it's a young person or old or middle age or female or male or it can happen to anyone uh, but of course uh, from the perspective of gender and we have so many examples of uh, forms and acts of, of gbv um, so just for instance you can just think about your community um, neighborhood or household or school uh, or marketplace or workplace um, if you could think of uh, any example uh, that relates to GBV uh, so in other words any act uh, uh, relate that relates to, to, to GBV that would uh, result in suffering or harm to any individual even if it's whether it's public or, or private um, so we have uh, four forms of uh, but each has many acts so you can see for ex for example okay uganda um 2010 uh, provides uh, within this um advocacy guide it gives several forms of of of, of gbv uh, in uganda so you have uh, physical form which uh, has to do with heating uh, some of the physical form involves acts of uh, pushing heating grabbing beating of uh, female genital mutilation uh, that's the fgm uh, burning or choking or kicking or any other traditional uh, practices or other physical practices that would uh, result in any harm or suffering of the victim or survivor you we have our uh, psychological which has to do with emotional or mental well-being uh, and some of the acts involve uh, shouting swearing insulting uh, extreme jealousy or uh, threatening to hurt uh, uh, any person or abandonment or constant questioning about someone's activity um, I just reflect on all these as we we, we ponder upon them uh there is sexual uh, form of gbv uh, which involves acts of uh, uh frost sex or could be rape or defilement or uh inserting objects into someone's private parts or coercion or making someone do sexual things against their will or refusal to have uh, protected sex or forced marriage uh, uh, name them any act that relates to uh, sexuality um, then you have a social economic form which involves acts of uh, for instance uh, to do with um, withdrawal resources or control over resources uh, against someone's will or um, uh, spending uh, jointly and family resources without partners consent or preventing someone from owning property or accessing uh, property not allowing someone to have money or to work denial of, of opportunities or such as education or name them so any that trade to social economic dimension of development uh, so there are so many uh, but here we just uh, giving a few uh, so you can just think about your uh, Think about your community and see uh, or you could have experienced them uh, or you, 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 your friend could have experienced them uh, just think about them and see uh, where such kind of act falls in these four forms so the GBV status uh, in Uganda uh, 
the the uh, Uganda Bureau of Statistics um, in its uh, uh, demographic health surveys uh, provides some statistics, and we've had uh, several uh, demographic health survey reports uh, from 2000 uh, up to uh, 2016 so far, I think. Yeah, so. So you have uh, all all sorts of statistics. So the 2001 uh, um, uh, UDHS report is not captured here because uh, some of the data uh, is not reflected for these different forms uh, of violence. So you have, for instance, um, if you look at uh, the the reports and and then trends, uh, if we look at, for instance, okay, percentage of women and men. Um, age 15 to 49 so usually the the, the demographic health survey looks at the reproductive uh, age mm, so percentage of women and men uh, age 15 to 49 who have ever experienced different forms of violence are uh, since age of 15 so you have for instance uh, when we talk about physical gbv uh, you're looking at, uh, for instance, women in 2006, uh, they were 31%, and you can see it has increased to uh, 34 uh, and 34 in 2011 and 2016, respectively. And for men, you you see uh, 45 uh, uh, increasing from 2006 to 50 uh, from um 2011 of course uh one might question oh wait a minute uh, how about how come here men and women um uh, how, how come here passage of men is more than that of women yes of course uh with data it depends on the instruments they have used but also accessibility of uh, the different respondents so this is generalized data uh, i mean uh, and of, of course, but also physical, remember, has to do with uh, uh, could be related, uh, the percentage could, could relate to the fact that uh, in most cases it is men who are involved in uh, physical activities or uh, maybe conflicts. Uh, so th those can result in uh, some high level of, of physical harm. So the variation here is influenced by many several factors when it comes to sexual gbv uh, you could see that okay uh, uganda is doing a little bit well and the, the trends are uh, changing shifting negatively uh, from 11 percent um, in 2006 uh, to six and six um, in 2011 and, and uh, 2016 respectively compared to men uh, here where you see that we we the reduction is just uh, gradual um so you, you also a combination of uh, you have cases of where men and women have re report a combination of both physical and sexual and therefore you have um men uh, i mean women uh, percentage 29 percent for instance in 2006 uh, 29 percent of women had experienced physical and sexual um, uh, and that has been changing over over years reducing in numbers uh, compared to men also the number of men is uh, percentage of men is is very um is is uh, uh less compared to that of women but then you also have uh, cases where men and women report to have experienced either physical or sexual so that is also another percentage so uh, you can visit these reports and see um, uh, the details of, 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 of the data but but again, uh, this relates to what we just talked about before, uh, that uh, men uh, women experience uh, GBV proportionate disproportionately compared to uh, to men.
and again uh, just a reminder that when we talk about GBV we are not only talking about violence against women but we are looking at uh, gender based violence that's why we have statistics of men and, and women here uh, but of course also a representative of boys and, and, and girls but of course again um, at age of 15 the report also considers those as uh, men and we have several uh, factors associated with GBV prevalence uh, those have to do with uh, for instance poverty alcoholism drug abuse or previous experience uh, where someone who has uh, a child who has grown up seeing parents um, fight or could think that uh, yeah that's the way of life uh, gender related traditional norms such as um, and, and customs such as uh, female genital mutilation or early marriage uh, uh, you you have social economic or political empowerment especially by 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 women uh, whereby some women do not have access to particular resources or or don't have control over uh, their income or other benefits and opportunities uh, you have weak community sanctions uh, and state laws against perpetrators a weak judicial system among others we've had cases of uh, women who go to police stations or other agencies uh, to report the cases and then uh, yeah you have them say okay domestic violence or that is a private uh, issue uh, also uh, cases of where men try to, to report uh, GBV cases and then they are uh, humiliated by uh, other men or officers that they shouldn't be behaving like that because according to the culture uh, that's not how they are supposed to behave so all those are factors that are uh, may perpetrate uh, gbv for prevalence so but of course these factor factors give a reflection of causes of poverty and therefore showing a relationship between uh, gender inequalities uh, gbv and development fact uh, is that violence is not a sign of discipline or, or love uh, as most people or most traditions um, stipulate uh, it is rather a sign of uh, domination and control over the, the, the victims or survivors but also uh, although GBV usually happens in private it is not a private issue uh, it affects families uh, communities and the entire country and therefore uh, GBV has an impact. Uh, there are imp implications of GBV on, on, on development at individual, um, household, community, uh, and national, but even on global level. And so uh, let's take a look at implications of GBV to development at household level. Uh, of course, the implications have uh, a negative uh, impacts on agriculture. Uh, income uh, security, uh, health and education, uh, and therefore ex affecting the well-being of of of, uh, of any person or household. Uh, so in that case, um, it affects uh, productivity at household level. Uh, survivors or victims lose jobs. Uh, these ch children drop drop out of school uh, or get malnourished because of some let's say denial of food um the cost of treating survivors and fear uh, and fighting cases against perpetrators uh because that has a cost on on household uh, well-being and of course the end result is is increased poverty characters through isolation vulnerability uh, physical weakness and powerlessness uh, of not only survivors but also perpetrators uh, uh, because take an example at household level if uh, the perpetrator is the husband or the wife or uh, if any uh, if the case is reported then they are imprisoned if they're imprisoned then that has an effect on on uh, on the household so therefore affecting uh, the household in general and again affecting 
the the survivor and the and the, and the perpetrator because again they have also to spend on cases there is also implication on community level uh, for instance implications could include uh, an, uh, an impact on community production um, it could lead to uh, of course vulnerability to extreme poverty it has uh, of course uh, survivors susceptible to hiv and of course uh, that has an implication on the general com community and of course deny of basic needs uh, for instance health services to women uh, education to, to children or food and limit survivors to enjoy their rights uh, thus challenging of course life um, sustenance and uh, esteem and freedom implications to development have to do with uh, of course uh, also at national and international level uh, Uh, the, the, the state is both a direct and indirect perpetrator sometimes also for instance if the policies uh, are not responsive to to to, uh, to the to the citizen but the state can also be reviewed as a perpetrator uh, when the state when it fails to, to protect the rights of citizens or those who are indeed suffering gpv the state can be viewed as a perpetrator if it formulates and implements policies and laws that disregard human rights uh, if uh, or when it it adventures on the uh, minority groups um, such as women or prisoners or disabled and of course as a perpetrator if it denies uh, the responsibility uh, for acts of gbv done in the domestic spheres and spheres and and among other acts but the state can also be indirectly considered as a perpetrator if it fails to review gender uh, insensitive laws and policies that influence particular uh, GBV acts and if it fails to allocate resources to programs that would uh, address uh, GBV. So the state can be both a perpetrator of GBV but can also it also has an upper hand in uh, redressing GBV not only at uh, in public uh, but also in uh, private spheres so of course GBV has uh, prior uh, effects on economic social and political development of, of, of the country in general so if you consider what we've looked at um, for instance at implications on household but also implications on um, uh, community level if you combine all those they have a be uh, a multiplier uh, effect on, um, on 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 the the the, the country's uh, development so for instance uh, if you have high incidence of of uh, gbv then there are direct costs uh, uh, in terms of the the, the government ex, uh, expanding on cases related to gbv or indirect costs uh, um, represent the value of lost productivity from both paid work and unpaid work but of course uh, you also look at issues of food security or it can lead to reduced um, income levels of people um, uh, think about per capita income uh, but GBV can also amplify school dropouts and health risks, risks and of course that has an impact on, on uh, uh, the state's uh, cost of, of service provisioning and there is also uh, GBV also increases levels of corruption uh, at some levels and of course enhances um, or enlarges inequalities uh, which have an implication a negative implication on, on, on the country's uh, development. So, as said by uh, UBOS, but of course uh, cited in, in, in Care Uganda, uh, uh, when we prevent GBV, we promote safe, uh, peaceful, and productive families and communities. And therefore, uh, eventually, of course, from a broader perspective, we promote uh, development at national and global level. So, and therefore, 
uh, it is an it is an obligation for every actor um, uh, at household, every actor at community, every actor at national and other leadership positions or any uh, position that would help to to redress GBV. Uh, it is uh, the role of everyone um, to participate. Uh, could be indirectly or directly. Uh, in redressing uh, um, uh, issues of GBV if we must, uh, of course, promote development and gender equality. So this is, we have, let's look at some of the strategies that um, civil society organizations and government have um, uh, adopted to address uh, some of, of the GBV uh, cases uh, in Uganda. Uh, of course, n knowing such st statistics as we have seen in the previous slides, um, that that of course uh, GBV happens in private and pu public uh, uh, spheres, uh, uh, that gives uh, uh, implies some position on uh, um, different actors that must um, act. Uh, personally or uh, collectively uh, to transform uh, particular aspects uh, which perpetuate um, GBV at all level. Of course, the, the whole idea is to, is aimed at uh, um, reducing uh, GBV and therefore promoting gender equality and therefore uh, uh, gender equality comes with multiplier effects in terms of positive uh, uh, impacts uh, on uh, uh, development or social change, if you will. So one of them is uh, adoption of uh, uh, international and regional policy frameworks. Uh, definitely uh, different countries um, uh, sign and, and, and follow uh, particular uh, international and regional frameworks regarding um, um, I mean aimed at, at, at reducing GBV and one of them is the 19, uh, 1979 United Nations uh, uh, CEDAW, uh, the Convention on, on the Elimination of, of All Forms of, of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, we also have the Beijing Global Platform for Action um, and then there is also the 20, uh, uh, 2008 uh, Southern Africa Development Community um, Protocol on Gender and Development, which also looks at uh, uh, issues of, of, of addressing GBV. And of course, some of the regional uh, policy instruments also include uh, uh, the, the Maputo Protocol, um, which looks at the, 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 uh, at rights of women in Africa. Uh, but also the, the, the 2006 International Conference on the Great Lakes Region, um, uh, ICG RR Protocol, and then there is also the, the GOMA Declaration. Now, all these are uh, different frame, policy frameworks at uh, international and, in, and, and national level that uh, aim at, uh, at addressing GBV um, within a particular uh, at global level, but also in regions, and of course, it goes deep uh, to all other um, different levels. But of course, away from uh, the international and regional uh, instruments, Uganda itself has its own legal and policy frameworks, but of course, uh, developed and formulated uh, following the international and, and uh, regional uh, protocols and um, of course the main one uh, for Uganda's case um, the main one for Uganda's case is uh, the the uh, the constitution of Uganda 1995 which which uh, of course uh, uh, stipulates that uh, every individual has rights and freedoms and therefore uh, no harm should be made to, to them um, as citizens, of course, as as human beings, of course, following the Declaration of, of Human Rights uh, of, of 1948. Uh, uh, um, then the, 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 there is uh, the Uganda Gender Policy 2007, there is a domestic 
uh, violence acts of 2010 there is uh, guidelines on uh, for prevention and and response to female genital mutilation as one uh, act of, of, of of course one act of sexual uh, uh, gbv uh, there is uh, the referral pathways for response to gbv uh, cases in uganda uh, we also have guidelines for establishing and managing uh, management of, of GBV shelters in Uganda. The shelters, so the government, um, in partner with uh, civil society organization, have have established different shelters in different regions. Uh, the shelters can provide psychosocial support and other kinds of, of support. Uh, for instance, legal support and 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 so on uh, to those who come to report and and then they they, they are given protection uh, from the perpetrators then there is a national action plan on elimination of gbv uh, there is um, the national policy on elimination of, of gbv uh, in uganda and the national male involvement strategy uh, of course this one aiming at the 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 the, the, the uh, the, the fact that uh, since most perpetrators uh, are reported to be males, therefore um, uh, the strategy aims at having males uh, get engaged in the fight against uh, GBV. So all these are different. Of course, these are just a few. There are so other many others that are. Uh, direct or indirectly integrated in in other uh, policy frameworks uh, uh, and therefore help to address gbv cases uh, another strategy is of course provision of legal help uh, the judicial and legal system of course the government and civil society organization help uh, in securing justice of course through support for survivors i have just mentioned for instance uh, the shelters uh, uh, that protect survivors and and uh, of GBV and therefore helping them to to process them through uh, legal chan channels to, to 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 help them access legal services. But of course, also civil society organizations are involved in offering legal aid. Uh, and one of the example we have FIDA Uganda, uh, which is the Association of Women Lawyers, of course, established in 1974. And uh, it gives that uh, kind of special services, the uh, legal uh, services to uh, women who are experiencing GBV. There is also protection and giving shelter to survivors. I've already been talking about that. Uh, that some uh, uh, examples of them are in Barara, uh, Mubende, Nebi, uh, and other. Uh, parts of, of Uganda. We have, I think, so far about uh, 13 operating, uh, although when they were in 2013, the establishment were around 17. But of course, uh, of recent with uh, reduction in uh, aid, but of, of also, also um, uh, government's inability to sustain those shelters the numbers have reduced and services have also uh, deteriorated but some other uh, shelters are still operating and therefore they offer uh, provision of temporary accommodation provision of uh, um, protection from perpetrators counseling and and prostitution representation in court provision of medical care and provision of basic needs uh, uh, such as food and clothing. But of course, the question here would be how sustainable are such services, considering that uh, resources are limited uh, on the side of uh, government and donors, but also the management of these shelters. Uh, and again, another question there is, uh, where do these survivors go after they've been discharged from this uh, temporary um, protection. So those are, of course, areas for research uh, if one is interested.
Uh, another strategy has to do with the allocation of, of, of resources. Of course, there are so many actors that are involved in uh, funding uh, programs and interventions that aim at reducing um, uh, GBV cases. And uh, you have World Health Organization and other UN uh, agencies. You have local council budgets. You have NGO funds. You have funds through Ministry of, of Labor. So all those, the combination of the consideration of all those resources, uh, have been indeed helping in in uh, reducing uh, cases of of, of violence. Um, then you have also empowerment of survivors uh, that, of course, uh, has to deal with affirmative action um, and, again, uh, other forms of awareness creation and empowerment through education at all levels. Uh, and, uh, civil society organizations also act as major catalysts in terms of lobbying and advocacy and, therefore, also implementing interventions that look at empowering um women uh, i mean women or men or any other uh survivors of gbv um so that they can uh live uh, the lives they, they they wish to there is also research and monitoring and evaluation of course looking at how interventions are failing or uh, working in different contexts and uh of course uh research trying to establish statistic or evidence or provide how uh, interventions would work uh, to prevent GBV or address it. Uh, and of course, uh, research has also to do with the dissemination of information, information that would be uh, used by different actors in terms of designing policies or evidence-based interventions to address uh, GBV. Now, these are some of the strategies. Of course, uh, there are others um, uh, that we could not explore, uh, but you can do more research. Uh, but of course, these strategies do not uh, uh, are not perfect, if we may say. Uh, and in ma many cases, of course, uh, what is written is not what is um, implemented. So there is a difference here in terms of the ideal versus reality and, of course, oh, putting a, uh, a theory into action. So uh, there are cases of, of uh, uh, missing gaps uh, in terms of, 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 of talking and uh, acting. So some of the loopholes in, in some strategies have, have limited the government and civil society organization, of course, to to address the, the the GBV cases as they would have done so if uh, such links if such missing links uh, were not in existence. So think about the the counter uh, factual uh, incidents. So some of the missing links have to do with, uh, of course, um, the legal pluralism. Uh, by this I mean, uh, for instance, Uganda. Uh, I mean, the, the survivors are limited by the, the fact that uh, while Uganda has an established formal legal system, there are also traditional means of addressing GBV. And in those, uh, you'll find that some of these perpetrators are part of those traditional committees that are aiming at uh, addressing GBV. So that limits... Uh, the, the, the extent to which GBV can, cases can be reported and addressed uh, on time. So in some cases you have a woman who has been uh, battered and then goes to report the elders or LOC, but the LOC is part of the of the committee uh, or part of the perpetrators uh, themselves and therefore would therefore favor the perpetrator than uh, the survivor or victim. There is also non-engagement of men in strategies and therefore limited engagement means that we are more addressing of addressing symptoms rather than the root causes. Uh, if we are saying that more men are perpetrators than compared to, to women, then a need to in, engage more men to understand the, 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 
the implications of GBV would be uh, better. There is also limited, of course, coordination among relevant actors and stakeholders, and that limits uh, resource allocation or service provisioning. Uh, uh, poor policies and law formulation and enforcement uh, is becomes a problem, and the missing political will. If we have limited political settlement um, in, uh, uh, towards addressing GBV, then uh, that again takes us back to what we were talking about uh, state as being an indirect or direct perpetrator of GBV if it's not willing to address uh, GBV. Then undermining cultural norms and religious values, uh, we also have limited resource allocation uh, even though different actors are trying and then ad inadequate monitoring and evaluation of, of, of what works for who uh, and for what purpose and under what context or circumstances. Uh, of course, uh, GBV interventions that work in a particular context might not work in another. So, lacking monitoring and evaluation of those interventions uh, therefore limits us to have particular evidence that would help us to design or redesign or reform particular interventions to fit particular uh, contexts. So that needs to, to be looked at. So what is the way forward? Um, engage men and boys in strategies, coordinate among, uh, co coordinate and collaborate or build partnerships among different uh, actors and stakeholders. Um, have policy and legal reforms to have one formal legal system uh, and therefore I mean, uh, reduce incidents of having traditional uh, kind of in uh, of of, of uh, limitations then have increase of women increase women representation and motivation and, and men motivate women uh, to, uh, to engage in political decisions so that in this case uh, they have their needs represented use culture and religious uh, leaders put them at forefront so that because they are the, the gatekeepers of communities so if they become aware and sensitive about uh, the, the, the GBV subject then that eases uh, the ways of, of addressing GBV. Train authorities on GBV issues, uh, police, teachers and health and therefore they become aware of uh, of on how to address uh, these issues, mainstream gender issues in school curriculum and organizational cultures uh, or policies uh, so that we minimize incidents in other um, uh, institutions because GBV happens not on that household level or uh, but it happens in other institutions including schools and organizations. Of course con we do continuous research and monitoring and evaluation and of course sustainable information dissemination which is gender sensitive and therefore targeting different uh, users that can help in designing uh, effective interventions. So bottom line is that uh, as long as power relations between males and females are still dominant, GBV uh, still persists. So of course promote gender, if we promote gender equality then in turn we may reduce uh, GBV or, or, or do we? Of course the question is that of course uh, to some extent some arguments uh, have come up that indeed gender equality also perpetuates uh, GBV uh, in some cases that in some cases when women indeed become uh, powerful and have uh, more and their status uh, is amplified and then they have uh, uh, equality in terms of economic uh, economic um, uh, development then they also tend to to use their uh, that privilege to perpetuate uh, GBV but of course uh, as I already say I mean we we can't refuse uh, to sleep because we are failing to, to, to dream. So we have to try um, that. So, uh, but of course, in this case, we look at um, uh, uh, 
the idea of having more benefits uh, that uh, that outweigh uh, risks when we promote gender uh, equality uh, uh, towards in 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 a way that would eventually reduce GBV. So liberty in what, of course, talking and writing does not uh, of itself transform into liberty in action. So change must be made that um, uh, if we do talk, then we must do action. So as an individual, of course, you as well have uh, a role to do something, have a role to play. Um, not only to look at uh, civil society organizations or international agencies or the state. Each individual has a role to play. Uh, that if you see, for instance, someone uh, perpetrating or ha trying to harm someone, then it's your role as a citizen uh, to report, of course. Uh, so, we reduce gender-based violence and we create a happy community. Thank you.